Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is the unboxing of the Canon EOS R3 without a box because we don't have an official box just yet but this is an R3 and there's not much I'm allowed to tell you about it other than what we already know because if I go to tell you the megapixels which are how many no no I get that was a terrible reaction time from the Canon rep over here to the left I'm not allowed to tell you certain things and if I do he's just gonna yell no. No, but I can talk about certain things, is that correct? Yes. Yes, I can talk about certain things. Anyway, I have not had much time to play with this just yet. I have tested a few things and the rest of today, we've got like one day to test it out, but that doesn't matter because it's happening when you're watching this video. First things first is you feel how much lighter this camera is than its pre, well, they don't want me to say predecessor or they don't want me to call this the flagship when in essence, this is the flagship mirrorless camera is what I'm gonna call it because there is no better mirrorless camera on Canon's side than this. This is the one D, oh my God, is that heavy. Look at the difference in size right here between the 1DX Mark III and the EOS R3. It is significantly lighter. I know the exact percentage lighter, but I'm not allowed to say it. It's No. But we, we just bleeped it because I'm not allowed to tell you, but it was a very slow reaction over here again. And they've already threatened to take the Canon money truck away if I say the wrong thing. But really, the first thing you notice when you pick it up is how much lighter it is, which is a big deal for photographers as they get older. Or also, being that it's a little shorter and smaller, you can put it in your bag, but you can't take off the vertical grip because, well, it's built in like a pro camera should be. Unlike the Sony A9 and the A1, even though I do like the ability to take the grip off on those, I have that ability, I don't have it here. But let's put the 1DX Mark III back over here, try not to break the counter. Let's give you a walk around the R3. As you can see right here, this is the, what they call this, the multifunction shoe? Oh, it is called the multifunction shoe, and I'm not allowed to show it to you. That's why it has a rubber condom on top of it, so that it can block it, because it's not officially, officially shown what it can do. Uh, you've got your flip-out rotatable screen, which, to be honest, when I'm shooting, this is really not something I'm going to use. I know it may come in handy if you want to hold it above your head every once in a while, just like this. But the truth of the matter is, it's still not completely flush. You can see, even though this is a pre-production model, they want me to let you know that it's pre-production, that doesn't mean it's going to be any different because this is an R5, right, Steven? Yep. We have an R5 right here. Oh, it looks like a bouncy board, like one of those things you jump in the pool from. But yeah, you can see that it's on this angle, which honestly messes with your lines when you're trying to get them straight and it's off to the side. So you, you're not looking and getting a flush view to get your line straight, which is still much easier through the EVF. You can see that the EVF sticks out further because of the eye control option. Holy Jesus, look how much further it actually does stick out, Steven. That is so much further. How do I do that? I can line it up. You, can, you, yeah, you can't tell, but look at that. That is massive. Now it's for the eye control, which I did get to test out and try to calibrate. And even though my eyes do this when I look to the side, it's funny because the eye control was actually tracking my eye movement side to side. Now you do have to spend a bunch of time getting it calibrated in different lighting situations. And then Steven, who got to play with it yesterday when I didn't get to play with it, said after a bunch of calibrations, it started to work extremely well. Now I'm not sure if it's going to be effective in the photojournalistic space where I'm gonna be shooting or in the sports space, I'm sure that's what they're hoping for, but it's not the same IAF that you saw in the EOS R3, what was it called, EOS 3? EOS 3. EOS 3, it was just the EOS 3. That was like some kind of different eye control. That had eye control, right? Yeah, you know, I'm getting a shake. But yeah, that's what that had, it's different. It's obviously new, it's not 25 years ago for God's sake, so don't think that the technology is gonna be the same old snail technology from back then. It's interesting. I didn't expect it to be what it was and how it functions is pretty good and I'm not allowed to tell you about that or the Canon money truck goes beep, beep, beep. Okay, around the back of the camera, you've got basically all these buttons. 
You've got a smart controller here, which is interesting because it's on the One DX Mark III, and at least it's not that stupid touch sensitive thing from the EOS R. Was that your idea? No. No, it wasn't his idea. That was a terrible idea. This multi controller is awesome because you can quickly move things around. But what's weird is you've got the knipple right here, which is called a, what is the knipple called? The joystick. You have a joystick. And it's weird because the joystick and the smart controller are like right next to each other and they kind of do the exact same thing to move. Uh, I don't really use that, but the smart controller, ooh, you've got one here when you go vertical as well. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this photo on the screen right now edited using Fro-Pak 3. Let's start with Fifth Element. That's what it looks like. Then we got Canadian Tuxedo. That looks good as well, followed by Capone. That pulls out a ton of color, but it looks really nice. Then we've got Prestige Worldwide, which is more like a general catch-all. But one of my favorite all-time presets is Skittles from Fro-Pak 1, and with one click, it's like boom. But that's too much for me. So I also went ahead and modified Skittles for my taste, and that is the final result. And that's the point. If you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point that you can go ahead and tweak after the fact, we've created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to grab Skittles in Fropack 1 and get Fro Pack 2 and 3 together, you can get the triple play bundle and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. So there's like four different ways you can move your focusing points here from the touch screen to the multi-controller to the joystick to your eye. So there's a bunch of different things you can do, but to anybody that has been shooting Canon Pro cameras for, you know, more than a day, you're going to pick this up and you're going to feel at home. I went through the menu system and I was like, oh, it's like setting up any other Canon. It's pretty simple in my opinion. You have a ton of custom features and a ton of custom functions that you can set to fine tune the autofocus, which is what Canon has always been known for. And that's why a lot of people use this for sports cameras. Now, I was at the US Open yesterday and I was taking pictures of the people taking pictures because I was going to tell you that the percentage of people shooting Canon versus Sony versus that Nikon, it was like, it was actually mostly Sony. I saw a bunch of Sony. I would say that it was like 45, 45, which is like 90. Which, no, it was more than that. It was like almost completely Canon and Sony. And I did see a couple of people with Nikon and one person had Z cameras out there who actually knew Steven. I don't know the guy's name, but he's like, I know Steven. And I was like, cool, me too. And. Uh, and, and that was that. So we're lucky enough to have here the magnesium alloy body inside internal. It's kind of like the, the T2i, no wait, the Terminator. I don't know what their exoskeleton was. And I'm surprised how light this feels, but I guess that's what magnesium, oh, he flinched because he thought I was gonna throw it too soon. But we're, I'm actually gonna throw it to test it out. You ready? What's the best way, Frisbee? I caught it. You're supposed to drop it. But anyway, I can't tell you the specs. I can't say how many megapixels it is. I can't, I mean, we know that it's, I can't say how many megapixels it is, but we know it has a stacked CMOS sensor, which is backside illuminated. I could say that, which is supposed to be the, well, other cameras have already done that before. Uh, and then it shoots 30 frames per second. We know that in the silent mode. And I can say it is like a rocket ship because it's not, and it's honestly not the first camera that I've used that shoots 30 frames a second because the A1 already does that. Um, you will know soon enough about this camera. We'll have a hands-on preview of this version right here. We'll, I don't even think we're allowed to share raw files, but we'll try to do what we can do to get a first impression with this shooting sports. If we can, we have a hurricane going through now uh, and then give you some photojournalistic stuff and give you my feedback. But there's two more things that I can do and that is Steven. Sniff test and wind tunnel Sniff test. Sniff test and wind tunnel test. You know, it, it must have been in the, uh, the Canon money truck because man, it smells like that scene from Breaking Bad where they're just laying on those millions and millions of dollars because man, Canon money truck smells good. Wind tunnel test time. We're going to go here. Here we go. Don't look at me. There's another Canon person over there looking at me. I 
I don't know, Stevens, does that pass or fail the wind tunnel test if it doesn't move? I think it failed today. Failed. Yep, R3 failed the wind tunnel test. That's right, do you hear that beeping? That is the money truck backing away. All right, anyway, I'm looking forward to playing with this for the rest of today. I will tell you, it does feel great in the hands. I wouldn't expect anything less. I'm calling it the flagship camera. I know I'm not supposed to call it the flagship camera, but why would you buy a 1DX Mark III at this point when you can have the better than 1DX Mark III in mirrorless form? If you still want this, I don't know what's wrong with you. Get with the times. We're in a mirrorless world and I mean, Roberta L. is a material girl. That's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.